side for Vieira, who will play it through to Gabriel Jesus, who's in here for Arsenal, Gabriel Jesus to finish it off, oh what a way to do it, Gabriel Jesus seals the points for Arsenal, he's back and he's back with a bang, into the penalty area it goes, Gabriel header and it's into the back of the net, Arsenal take an early lead through Gabriel. You're listening to the Chronicles of Aguna. The Daily Arsenal Podcast with me, Harry Simeon. Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to another episode of the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast, part of, of course, the 90 Min football family. This is a pre-recorded edition. Uh, it is going to be a slightly shorter edition ahead of a full-length preview show that we've got coming up on Friday, looking ahead to that massive game against Brentford at Emirates Stadium. An opportunity for Arsenal to go top. We need to grab it with both hands and then we can sit back on Sunday, regardless of how that game goes, knowing that we did our bit ahead of the game against Porto and then a pretty long uh, break for the Gunners before they then face Manchester City in what is going to be a bit of a title showdown. Big, big two weeks in the title race this. Um I didn't want to not get you guys uh, an episode out today. I wasn't able to get one out yesterday. Um, I had some some sort of other work commitments and um, and some family stuff that that really did uh, need my attention. And um, and I wasn't in the right headspace to be honest with you. And uh, I don't think you should make podcasts for the sake of it. I don't think I should sit in front of a camera um, and 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 try to find things to talk about if I'm not really in the right mood because I'd be wasting my time. I'd be wasting your time as well. Um, And so I decided to skip yesterday's show, but I wanted to bring you on today. um, And I am having to record this a little bit earlier than the time I'd like to release it uh, just because of uh, work as well, kind of getting in the way. I mean, maybe playing a bit of catch up um, due to sort of being unavailable yesterday afternoon onwards when I had scheduled some things that I needed to be doing and should have been doing. But hey, we are here and there's a few bits and pieces that I want to talk about. And I want to start with the fallout from last night's Champions League action. The round of 16 has been pretty much as you expected so far in terms of the favourites making their way through. We saw Bayern Munich progress. We saw Paris Saint-Germain progress. Um, And of course, last night we saw Real Madrid and Manchester City progress. And for a long time, when talking about the Champions League, I've been saying, look, I want us to go really, really far. And I think we're capable of going really, really far. Now, I appreciate that progress in the Champions League isn't just about your talent levels. Um, I appreciate that other things come into play. For example, you know, mental strength when you really, really need it. Experience um, in the difficult moments. Um you know, the know-how, you know, we've seen an Arsenal side this season play against certain opposition that on paper and talent-wise we're miles ahead of, but we haven't always been able to pick up the results that we've wanted. And if we go back to previous years, I know it's a different competition, but looking at the Europa League, we found ourselves falling short against sides that, again, we were more talented than just because maybe we didn't have the experience, maybe we didn't have the know-how, not just on the pitch, but off the pitch as well. Mikel Arteta is still a really, really new manager. But when the talent is there, the expectation is going to be there. And although, as I say, the round of 16 so far has been pretty much as you'd expect it to be, I've been looking further ahead and I've been thinking to myself, A, it would be a massive massive disaster if we don't get through against Porto. And I worry not just about the impact of that in terms of our you know, the Champions League, where obviously we'd be out. But I worry about the impact that would have on the team confidence-wise going into the title running as well. So I think there's so much more at stake than just the place in the last eight when we take on Porto next Tuesday. But I've sort of been saying that apart from Manchester City, I think talent-wise, you know, uh, and and we're pretty close to them at the moment, but I'd say talent-wise, we're as good as anybody. And so it's fine and right, I think, and justified to feel quite confident that Arsenal can go a long way in this competition. And the pushback I kept getting was, yeah, but there's Real Madrid, there's Real Madrid, and there's Real Madrid, right? Real Madrid are the Champions League's kings. Um, You know, they've got that heritage, they've got that 
tradition. They've got the know-how. They've got all of the experience. Basically, all of the things that I say that maybe we lack, Real Madrid have them in an abundance. A manager like Carlo Ancelotti, who's been there, done it. Players who have been there, done it. And they have this kind of aura about them as a football club that, that makes them quite intimidating to play against. And I agree with that. But I caught the second half of their game last night against RB Leipzig. And, and obviously looking at the first leg result, I thought they're going to cruise through now. No problem. No issues whatsoever. That wasn't the case. RB Leipzig made Real Madrid look really, really average for large periods of that game and went very, very close late on in the game to taking it to extra time. So I'm not saying that if we draw Real Madrid in the next round, let's say we you know, touch would beat FC Porto and progress to the, the round of eight. I'm not saying that if we get Real Madrid, we definitely categorically 100% get past them. Because as I say, I think when you get to the business end of the season, it comes down to more than just talent, confidence, mentality, all of the things that I've been talking about come into play. So Real Madrid would, of course, be a massive threat if we were to be drawn against them, if, of course, we progress. But they're not unbeatable. And last night showed me that an RB Leipzig side, who are nowhere near as talented as this Arsenal side, so nearly, had they taken their moments and made the right decisions at times, would have dumped Real Madrid out. So, you know, I'm not saying that, yeah, we get them and I'm not going to bat an eyelid and it'll be fine and we're definitely going to progress if we even progress from this round. But I'm saying where I've been talking about the fact that in my mind, Man City are the only side that I'm really, really concerned about. I think what I saw from Real Madrid yesterday, who were the only other team that I'm probably fearful of in terms of talent, you know, I look at that and I go, you know, maybe they're not as unstoppable as people would have you believe. And maybe there is a bit of the kind of reputation leading the way for them. And, and listen, they've earned that reputation over a number of years. I'm not saying they don't deserve it. I'm just saying that, you know, reputation can go some way, but talent needs to um, prevail as well. And, and you know, taking your moments and, and being clinical when it matters. And, and you can easily be a side that have the aura and all of that stuff. Real Madrid have this kind of never say die reputation in the Champions League, and rightly so, because they pulled a rabbit out of the hat on multiple occasions. But watching them last night, I'm not as fearful of them as I maybe was a week ago. And I, I think that is that is fair to say. Famous last words, maybe. But yeah, I think that's fair to say. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section as well. Look, there's, I mean, I, I don't want to get carried away and talk about the, the last eight because we still got a job to do against FC Porto. But I really do think that if we get past FC Porto, we should go into the, the last eight with our chests puffed out. And we should go into it feeling confident that we can progress whoever the opponent is. I really, really do believe that. OK, a couple of other bits uh, I wanted to talk about. We're going to start off by talking about uh, Arsenal's um, planned big spend, apparently. So it's been reported over the last couple of days that Arsenal are looking to spend big come the summer, um, but that they are planning to spend the majority of the total spend on uh, young players. Now, I think Arsenal are in a position where they've you know, worked really, really hard behind the scenes and spent a lot of money to get the club up to the point where it's competitive again, where we're having conversations about potential class clashes with Real Madrid, where we're having conversations about being involved in a game in a few weeks' time that has the potential to be a title showdown. There's been a lot of money invested along the way to get to that point. There's been some really good decisions made, some really strong coaching. The culture is completely different. It's taken a long time to get to where we are today. And we still haven't really achieved anything yet, if we're being honest. But I think there is probably, judging by this report, a want within the walls of Arsenal Football Club to, to make sure that all this work doesn't disappear or doesn't evaporate into thin air should Arsenal fail to really kind of crown it off. And even if they do crown it off, you want to make sure that it is sustainable, don't you? So I think Arsenal are going to, um, as per this report, start focusing on younger players. Now, Mikel Arteta wanted to get the team to the point he has, and we were going for a, a group of players that were maybe in the age bracket of sort of 21 to 24 or 25, um, thinking that that would be kind of medium-term to medium term solution. Those would be medium-term solutions, right? Um, players that are 
nearly at their best, not quite there yet. But then once they get to their best, are still not old enough for them to have no sell on value or, or, or no asset value. And what this report suggests is that Arsenal are going to now start come the summer looking at players in a slightly lower bracket so that those guys can then hopefully develop at the, the rate we expect and push on and take over from the 21 to 24 year olds that we have now, 25 year olds, whatever, and, and almost create that new wave of players so that the, the, the foundations that Arsenal um, have built over the last few years are long lasting and, you know, whoever it is coaching the club, whether it's Mikel Arteta or, or someone else, nobody stays at a club forever um, these days. You know, there will be those foundations there. And I think the fact that the PSR stuff is playing a big part at the moment in everybody's plans probably plays into this as well. You know, bring in players that are obviously talented, believe in your ability to develop them, which, you know, Arsenal have done really well. Chelsea maybe not so well, as an example from, from another club. And, you know, make money, but also, you know, produce a good team and have the base core of a really, really strong side for a number of years. And I think Arsenal are probably right to look at that. But what I am slightly concerned about is a complete focus shift before we've actually achieved what it is that we set out to achieve. You know, we do probably at some point need to go out and buy a top striker. And I think for the moment we're fine. And I think Mikel Arteta and his team have done a great job of shutting everybody up when it comes to that particular debate and discussion. But you feel like if we wanted to say that we've got a real fully complete squad, that's the one piece we're missing. So if we go out and get that piece and we continue to build towards having the complete squad, if you can ever really have that, then I'm fine with us also, you know, allocating some funds and allocating some effort and some time to going out and future-proofing what is a really, really talented squad for years to come as well. So I think this is the right approach and I was quite pleased to read it. My only worry and my only concern would be that we, we sort of pump the brakes, even subconsciously, on the project that we're currently in the thick of before we've actually got something to show for the progress, et cetera, et cetera. So that, that would be my only kind of reservation about that. But generally, um, I think it is, it is the right way to go. Okay. One more story to discuss and I'll be with you right after this. Don't go anywhere. You're listening to the Chronicles of Aguna podcast. Hands off of our boss, Barcelona have apparently been in contact with Mikel Arteta, trying to convince him that uh, a return uh, to Catalonia is the move for him. Listen, there are a million and one reasons why people would look at the job that Mikel Arteta is doing right now and say, yeah, we'll have a bit of that. We'd have him. He's built a team up from a, a really poor state. He's overseen the turnaround of a squad. Um, he has uh, instilled a totally different culture, a really healthy culture that you can feel not just on the pitch, but off it when you're at the club, when you're around the place, when you're in the stands, et cetera, et cetera. There's so much to be proud of and there's so much to be impressed by when it comes to the job that Mikel Arteta has done at Arsenal. Did he need time? Yes, he did. Did he get the time? Yes. Um, there was a patience and there was um, you know, a, a trust shown in him by KSE, the club's ownership, and the people making uh, those sort of executive decisions. And now... We we're in a place where we're much better off for that. Would he ever get that kind of time at a place like Barcelona where the pressure is so high all the time? Thierry Henry was talking about it on Monday Night Football the other night. Like there are dedicated TV shows to, to Real Madrid and to Barcelona every single night where they're just literally scrutinizing every little detail, every player's performance, every manager's decision, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Maybe not. And you know, I know that he's got an affiliation with that football club and he's got a connection to that football club. And that could, you know, mean, in my opinion, that, that one day he does decide to go there. But as I've been talking about a little bit earlier on on this episode, we're talking about the project that we're right in the thick of at the moment. Why would you jump ship and abandon it at this stage? You wouldn't, would you? You, you, you just wouldn't. To go to a club that are under some serious financial restrictions that are pulling every lever they can in order to try and raise funds because they know that they've fallen behind and they need 
um, to improve the squad. They've overspent on players. They're overpaying players that just aren't up to the level required. Yeah, there's a bit of uncertainty at Barcelona at the moment because Xavi is leaving at the end of the season, as he announced a couple of months ago, I think now. And it's understandable that they're going to go out there looking for people. But Mikel Arteta's come out publicly and shut this down. Yet Barcelona aren't getting the hint, aren't getting the message. They obviously think, if this is true, that there is a possibility they can convince him. The report does go on to say, however, that Mikel Arteta uh, rejected the um, the conversation and cited the term or the phrase, I'm a gunner. Now, I don't know how true that is. If it is true, it's bloody brilliant. Um, I do wonder if it's just a little bit of kind of uh, anti-Barcelona propaganda as well, because, you know, you do get that, you know, particularly in sort of European media where there is some real agendas and, you know, depending on what paper it's come from, what, what allegiances that particular journalist has, you're going to get a different story. And it's it's a big story to say that Barcelona, the, the mighty Barcelona, went in for uh, Mikel Arteta and he said no. So it could be designed to to make the club look bad as well. And maybe there's no truth in it whatsoever. I'm sure Mikel Arteta is going to get asked about it again in his press conference on Friday, and we'll listen out for that. But when he was asked last time about rumours that he could be on his way to Barcelona and that he was maybe considering that move, he moved very, very quickly to shut them down. And he talked about how upset he was by that story uh, doing the rounds. So, yeah, nothing to worry about from an Arsenal perspective at this stage. Will he stay at the Gunners forever? No, because nobody does. And I wouldn't blame him if at some stage in his career he wanted to go back to the club where it all kind of began for him and take them on. And whatever the job is and the remit is at that time, I'm sure Mikel Arteta would be open to that. He's someone that loves a challenge. But right now he's not going anywhere and there's no need to be concerned by reports in the Spanish media uh, claiming that um, Barcelona are working hard behind the scenes to try and make that happen. Anyway, um, I am going to leave it there for today. Just a brief episode, but as I say, we'll be back tomorrow with a full episode looking ahead to that game against Brentford at the weekend. Leave a like on the video if you're watching on YouTube. Subscribe to the channel if you're watching on YouTube. If you're listening on audio, please do leave us a review as well. It really, really does help. And I'll be back with more very, very soon. Until the next one, take care of yourselves. Have a great Thursday. Goodbye. 